I'm Mr Charhill, I'm the Head of Maths and I'm going to talk to you today about studying A-level mathematics at Davenant. Why choose maths? Hopefully your answer to this question is because you enjoy the subject. You are going to be studying this for the next two years and if you don't have a genuine enjoyment for the subject you'll find your maths lessons very challenging. The beauty of the subject is it's not a standalone subject. You don't just have to do maths if, for a maths degree. It supplements a lot of other A-levels in particular all three sciences, economics, psychology and it can also support many degrees whether they're engineering based degrees, finance degrees, accounting degrees, maths always looks good on your CV. Our entry requirements for maths are slightly higher than other subjects and we need at least a grade 7. This is due to the challenging nature of the subject. Maths is a challenging subject but it's also very rewarding. Just like all your A-levels, maths is a linear course, which means it's completely assessed at the end of year 13. The maths course has no coursework or projects, so your grade will be based solely on the exams that you do at the end of year 13. We're also a very popular choice at Davenant, and every year we have four maths groups. We teach the Edexcel qualification for mathematics. I've included the web address for the specification should you wish to look at it in more detail before September. It's also easy to find just by typing Edexcel A-level math syllabus into any search engine. Now, it doesn't matter which exam board you follow because the new maths A-levels have been designed so that every syllabus teaches the same content. So regardless of which option you follow, you would all study the same topics. Now, the way the subject is split as you can see, it's two-thirds pure maths, one-sixth statistics, and one-sixth mechanics. I'll talk about the topics in a bit more detail in a moment, but pure maths is the type of maths you're probably more used to seeing at GCSE. Statistics, again, you will have covered at GCSE with averages and data handling. Mechanics, you wouldn't have done so much of in maths, apart from a few distance time graphs, but you would have done a lot more in your science lessons and I'll talk about that in a bit more detail now. The pure content which makes up two-thirds of the course is covered by these 10 topics. Now a number of these topics you will recognize from GCSE. The work that you've done at GCSE on each of these topics is the foundations for the A-level. Now the A-level course assumes you can already do the GCSE standard so the textbooks do not revisit too much work from GCSE which is why we have our entry requirements at a grade seven and above, because a grade seven and above algebra that you learn at GCSE really is the foundations to be successful on the A-level course. Now, some of these topics will be completely new to you. At GCSE, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have covered anything on differentiation or integration. You wouldn't have covered any work on logarithms. And you may have done a little bit on exponentials, Algebra and functions is something you've done already and at A level it builds on the work in particular that you've done with quadratic equations, factorising and solving equations and solving simultaneous equations. Coordinate geometry, this, is a, this topic covers all the work you would have done previously on equations of lines, working with gradients, parallel lines, perpendicular lines. But at A level, we extend this to also incorporate circles and um, finding equations of circles, finding where circles and lines intersect. Sequences and series, again, you've covered this for linear sequences. We now extend this onto defining what a series is and looking at geometric sequences as well. And trigonometry, there's a lot more to learn for trigonometry. It goes beyond just right angle triangles and the sine and cosine rule. So there's a lot of new content there and it really does, you do have to hit the ground running. Now statistics content again is covered by these five topics. Topic two you've actually covered a lot at GCSE and it is one of the few areas of the A level which doesn't enhance the GCSE too much. And this takes into account all the work you'll have done already on box plots, 
cumulative frequency diagrams, histograms, looking at outliers, looking at spread. Some of the new topics you'll look at are hypothesis testing and statistical distributions. These are used a lot in some of your other subjects. Now I know biology and psychology have work that involve using some statistical distributions and hypothesis testing. What is new to A level is you have to study the statistics content in terms of what's called a large data set. When this A level course was designed, employers were heavily involved with the exam boards to tell them what they actually wanted from someone with a maths qualification. And what they desired was students who could actually apply statistical skills in the context of data, not just know how to do something, but actually apply it to real data. So for the Edexcel course, you are all given a large data set which covers the weather for different areas across the world, so cities in England and also cities across the world. And you will look at how to apply the skills that you've learned to real data and then to be able to interpret what that means. So it's not just about number crunching anymore, you actually have to be able to evaluate your answers and show that you understand what they display. Now, mechanics has a big overlap with physics. So like I said before, you will have covered some of this work at GCSE level in your physics lessons, where you would have looked at Newton's laws, you may have looked at momentum, and then in maths also we've done distance time graphs, speed time graphs, we start to look at the difference between what a scalar quantity is and what a vector quantity is. And then we look at moments, which are turning forces. Now, it's not vital that you have to do physics to understand this, because we teach mechanics from scratch. We don't make any assumptions that our students will be doing physics. It's just that if you do physics, then this will give you a nice overlap and you will see some material taught to you twice, hopefully from different viewpoints, which will enhance your understanding of the course. Now, homework is a big part of your maths course. Now, you have four to five lessons a week, depending on which week of the timetable it is. Now, our expectation is your private study should mirror, as a minimum, your lesson time. Now, that private study will include homework, it will include your own revision. And you need to make sure your effort is consistent across the course from day one. The A-level is a big step up from GCSE, but it's manageable if you keep up to date with your work. Don't think that you can just leave work to every holiday and then you'll catch up in six weeks. It can become very unmanageable if you try to carry out your A-levels with that sort of mindset. So one of the key things that you need to do is use your study periods wisely. You won't be in lessons for five hours a day. Some of you will have two study periods a day. Others may only have one study period a day. You need to use that time wisely. Keep up to date with your work. Review what you've done in your lessons to make sure you fully understand it. Because with the A level, what you will notice as you go through, whatever you're doing builds on your previous lessons work. So if you haven't fully understood something from a lesson, you're gonna fall further and further behind because you'll always be playing catch up. So you need to make sure you're understanding is clear. Now, as I've said, it's a step up from GCSE and for some of you, you will come across a topic at some point, whether it's in year 12, whether it's in year 13, where you might not fully understand it straight away. There's nothing wrong with that. And so you might get to a homework and you can't answer a question fully straight away. That's not the problem. How you react to it will determine on how successful you are. So the ideal student will attempt something, realise that they've not got it right, and then will look at getting help. Now, that help could be talking to your peers, having a small working group from your class to try and work on problems together. It could be going to your teacher, asking for some hints and advice, and then reviewing your work and re-attempting it. The key thing is, you always re-attempt it. Don't just accept something's wrong, leave it and move on. If you want to be successful at the subject, you need to always review your work, make sure your understanding is clear so that you can move forward and not have any gaps in your knowledge. 
we regularly assess our students throughout the course. These assessments mainly take the form of either end of chapter homeworks or half term tests. Your first major assessment will be in September and it will be based on the summer task. Now you can access the summer tasks from the Davenant website. The math summer task is based around grades seven to nine algebra work from the GCSE syllabus. As I've said earlier, the GCSE grade seven to nine algebra is the foundations for the A-level course. You have to be very confident in being able to factorize a quadratic, solve a pair of simultaneous equations, rearrange the subject of a formula. All these skills are vital at the start of the A-level for you to be able to progress well. So that's why we set up a summer task to help you recap some of this work over the summer holidays. When you arrive in September, you will have the summer task work completed and you will be able to mark it because we've provided you with the final answers. Your first couple lessons will be reviewing the summer task, going through any areas that you struggled on with your teachers to make sure you have a sound understanding. And then we will test you based on this work. Now this test is quite important because we use it to inform our setting at the start of year 12. The exams for the course, which occur at the end of year 13, are three two hour papers. Now each paper is equally weighted and two of those papers are pure maths content and the final paper is split into two halves with one half being statistics and one half being mechanics. In the statistics and mechanics paper it doesn't matter which paper you do first, that's entirely up to you. The A level is awarded grades A star to E and at Davenant you will not sit an AS level at the end of year 12. You will just complete the full A level and get your qualification at the end of year 13. One of the key things that you need for the A level is not just the lever arch file and the paper but the dividers. For you to have your work organized and make it easy for you to revise we recommend that you buy dividers so that each of your notes are separated per chapter per topic so that when you're revising you can target it to areas and find your content very easily now we provide you for the textbooks for the duration of the course so you can see there a picture of the books if you want to look at those before you arrive in september now we issue these books, we re require a returnable deposit of £30. Once we have that, we'll issue the books, and then at the end of year 13, when you return the books, we'll return your £30. You will have to upgrade your calculator, unless you purchased one of the ones you can see now for your GCSEs. Now, with the new A-level, there was a great emphasis on using technology to do some of your working out. So this new calculator was designed for the A-level. Now as a minimum, you need to have this model. Some of your standard scientific calculators that you use at GCSE are not sufficient for the A-level. And if you were to take one of those into the exam, there'd be a number of questions you couldn't answer. Now these calculators cost approximately 25 pound. They've got a lot of functionality of a graphical calculator, but obviously the major limitation being they can't draw graphs. Now, this is the one model that the exam board recommends and you have to have this as a minimum. Now, some students do ask about purchasing a graphical calculator and you're more than welcome to. This is the model, the FXCG50, that the exam board recommends. However, it is a big step up financially. The class with scientific calculator, which I showed you previously, is about £25. This calculator costs around £100. Now obviously there's a lot more functionality in this just beyond solving graphs, it can do a lot more. Both calculators are extremely vital for the statistics work. Remember I was telling you earlier on about the large data set and employers wanting students to have the skills where they can actually apply statistical calculations to data but then also interpret and understand what that answer means. Now to give you time to do that in the exam, 
these new calculators can carry out a lot of the statistical calculations so you don't get many marks on some questions for the actual carrying out or solving the equation you get more marks for interpreting the answer and that's why these calculators are vital so once again you need the previous one as a minimum this is optional if any of you decide that you would like to have the graphical calculator as well so for September the key things you need to have done in advance you need to have completed your summer task marked it highlighted any areas that you've struggled with so that when you come into your first few lessons in September you can hit the ground running and get your support on those questions and iron out any creases so that when you sit your first test you're as fully prepared for it as you can be in terms of what you need to bring with you to your first few lessons now obviously we need our standard stationery so paper it can be lined or square what I would recommend is rather than buying a book having a pad which you can remove sheets from because that makes it a lot easier for you when you are handing in homework and filing work in a different order obviously your ring binder dividers standard pen pencil ruler the one of the two calculators and bringing a textbook deposit now there's different ways you can pay your deposit you can bring in a post dated check made payable to davenant foundation school we collect that check in we don't cash it unless at the end of year 13 the books aren't returned that's the only time we'd cash it or you can pay via parent pay the school's online payment portal the only difference in that one is you will be charged the 30 pound up front and then get the 30 pound refunded hopefully i've answered many of your questions in this video if you do have any further questions feel free to email reception at davenant.org with maths in your subject line and they will pass on any queries to me. Thank you.